the various ways in which VR can be applied to the field of education seem boundless. VR has already made its mark in the gaming arena, and it is plausible that VR will make the current connections between education and gaming even stronger. VR is immersive and will thus motivate the learner to remain in a particular learning experience far longer than they otherwise might outside of a virtual environment. VR's capacity for immersive learning can be applied to practically any discipline. For example, VR can potentially enable the end user to travel back in time, especially to significant periods of history, such as the Civil War. VR can enable us to walk in another's shoes, if even for a brief time. VR environments can also help second language learners practice using a foreign language in a spontaneous and authentic manner. However, VR is not without its detractors, and there are certainly some worrying sides to VR. For example, VR can be prohibitively expensive or complicated for schools or institutions to implement. Additionally, VR alone should not be considered an adequate replacement for human teachers. Young learners especially will still need human interaction to develop social skills. That being said, once the price of VR comes down and high-speed internet becomes more accessible and some sort of virtual education infrastructure is established, this mode of teaching could help level the playing field for many non-traditional students such as those from rural areas who may not have previously been able to obtain a standard education. The Museum of Northern Arizona can take the current pandemic lull in customer visits as an opportunity to create a VR space to attract more visitors. A soft launch using Google Cardboard headsets, which retail for $10, is a good way to introduce VR to smaller museums at a lower startup cost and users can keep their headsets for future visits, thus reducing costs as well as the spread of illnesses. According to VRDirect.com, a quality VR experience can be created in two days with just a collection of high-resolution images and videos and the proper software. In Sarah Kenderline's 2013 TED Talk, How Will Museums of the Future Look?, she suggests that creating VR environments are a great way to display extra museum inventory that can't fit into the finite space of a brick and mortar museum. According to a 2016 paper by Jung et al, effects of virtual reality and augmented reality on visitor experiences in museums, VR can be used to create more memorable experiences that increase the likelihood of tourists revisiting a particular museum, including a social presence either via avatars or other end users, helps to enhance this experience for the visitor. However, according to a Museum Next article by Charlotte Coates, some end users might experience some symptoms of simulation sickness, such as headaches, disorientation, or vomiting. Another challenge is keeping the headsets hygienic for the many users that put them on. Failure to keep headsets clean could result in the passing of illnesses or infections between museum visitors. An article on Locatify.com, Museum Trends, How Your Museum Can Collect and Use Data, provides insight into how VR can be combined with other technologies, such as beacon technology and machine learning, to create heat maps that track the flow of visitors throughout the museum. A similar use of these technologies can be used to track how long visitors stay in a particular environment or how they interact with avatars or each other. The main advantage of VR in the museum world is access. Sarah Kanderline's TED Talk discusses how advanced imaging technologies allow the end user to zoom in to a particular work that would be impossible with the naked eye or how decaying landmarks that contain artworks susceptible to damage from excessive tourism and climate change can be preserved and shared via VR technology. Charlotte Coates lists some of the costs and specific challenges associated with trying to integrate VR into museum exhibits. The virtual content can be prohibitively expensive to design and manage. 
the upfront costs of purchasing VR equipment, particularly VR headsets, can add up quickly. There is also the ongoing costs of maintenance and replacement of broken equipment. Charlotte Coates lists some of the costs and specific challenges associated with trying to integrate VR into museum exhibits. The virtual content can be prohibitively expensive to design and manage. The upfront costs of purchasing VR equipment, particularly VR headsets, can add up quickly. There is also the ongoing costs of maintenance and replacement of broken equipment. According to PCMag.org, the best overall VR headset for 2020 is the Oculus Quest 2 priced at $300. The HTC Vive Cosmos is the best whole room headset at $700. According to CNET.org, a desktop computer that is powerful enough to run a VR program starts at $1,500. According to RoundtableLearning.com, a 3D designer costs $150 to $200 an hour. Rather than looking at a painting of the Mona Lisa, the visitor could create their own virtual Mona Lisa or interact with characters in a painting. The future of virtual museums could open the door to interactive art, thus creating a new medium of artwork. The traditional approach of viewing art from a respectable distance could soon be replaced with responsive art, or art that reacts to the visitor. As costs come down and visitor expectations rise, Museums may find that they require a VR experience to remain competitive and viable.